Algorithms to Live By by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone. Who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps with ranking and SEO and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. Honestly, I will be honest, I will not pretend, especially because I suck at lying. Everything I found in this book, just I found it just a little bit tricky to keep up with at first. But if you are uh, into computer science, it's definitely up that alley. That being said, if you're not, two years later, I found it very compelling. These are algorithms we all seem to use, these processes of how we operate every day, but so few of them can be organized and optimized as well. They may be habits, but they're not algorithms. However, there are 11 algorithms the authors propose we can live by as long as we are living our best lives. And let's briefly talk about them. Algorithm one is optimal stopping. It is what forces us to embrace failure even when acting optimally. Which I guess makes you question how optimal it actually is. It's like you never know what's actually best. But few aspects of decision making are really as important as when to stop. How much driving do you need to do across the target parking lot before you actually park? How many people should you should you be with before you actually find the one who you stay with? How much of the Red Robins menu should you read before making a decision? The actual rule, if I understood this, and there is a rule for this, is 37%. If I understand correctly, the answer is probabilistically there. Algorithm two is explore, exploit. Kids are very good at exploring. They're not the best at exploiting. Adults love exploiting, but that's because they don't get bored of things as easily and quickly as kids do. How much do you exploit something before deciding to explore something else? I guess when you're 37% done with it. <laughs> if you eat this meal at this restaurant enough times, how, what is enough? How many times do you have to eat it and it's made where it's made imperfectly for you? If there, if there's like, I don't know, like a fly in your salad or something, and you're like, okay, I'm not eating this anymore. How bad does it have to be to the point where you are just not forgiving them anymore? To quantify any of the stuff I've, I've talked about in this video so far is probably a nightmare. <laughs> Algorithm three is sorting and Google is brought up a few times here. Computer science shows that the hazards of mess and the hazards of order are quantifiable and that their costs can be measured using the same currency. Time. And the authors talk about the search sort trade-off. The whole idea of decision making is so thoroughly and objectively inspected in this book. It's quite impressive. Algorithm four is caching. Caching was always confusing to me. It's still a bit confusing now, but I know it has to do with memory. I have the worst short-term memory ever. Somehow I remember that. Algorithm five is smashing that like button if you haven't already for the YouTube algorithm and scheduling. Scheduling. This is where stuff just gets a little bit complicated. The author talks about like the point where scheduling itself can become like an item on your to-do list. And of course, the trade-offs of it. Speaking from experience, I have been there. <laughs> it is really chaotic. Then also, context shifts. If you're a multitasker, bear with me with what I'm about to say. It's called context shifts in computer science where if you have to move from one type of task to another, it requires you to disregard all of the skills and behaviors and cognitive functions of that one task and recall that of the other task one by one and to single-mindedly focus on more than one task at a time when people say multitasking. This section of the book is why I'm like, okay, but you're not actually focusing on it because all that context shifting multitasking is what people call it, <laughs> is resulting in lost time and energy. You are doing what's called thrashing. You are being a system in full tilt, ultimately resulting in accomplishing nothing. And there is actually like a huge hole that I have found myself poking in that argument. However, it's a totally a different video topic. <laughs> Algorithm six is Bayes rule. If you are in a relationship and you are not the one making the decisions or wearing the pants, as they say, it's probably because you are under Bayes rule, the rule of the bay. I'm just kidding. It has absolutely nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> I mean, decisions are involved, but like not exactly in, with other people. This one is about predicting results of distribution based on probability. That and the whole bell curve, which is, it reminded me of Nassim Taleb's 
Black Swan, the infamous, infamous book Black Swan. Although these two guys articulated the extreme power law distributions way, way more simplistically. And I do not apologize about that because I do not know whether Nassim Taleb explains everything as what seems like overwhelmingly as he does on purpose or not. Algorithm 7 is overfitting and Oh my gosh, overfitting is like where you just go way, way overboard to the point that becomes like a literally a matter of life and death, at least for people. External causes of soaring obesity rates, cyberbullying, anything that's caused antitrust laws in the past and probably going to in the future. Like if you give anyone what they want, you are better off making sure that they are not getting too much from you for their minds and bodies to handle. Algorithm 8 is relaxation, my least favorite. Algorithm 9 is randomness. Again, this walks back into Nassim Taleb's work in my opinion, but it's definitely less brute. I think that's a good word for it. Algorithm 10 is networking. I really, I really like that these guys were able to make this a relatable book. Not just some thing that makes being human sound like being a robot. Sugar, you okay back there? With the way our brains think. I mean, people have been doing that alone for decades now, using words like operate and hardwiring and internal software and download and data framework describing human life. Not that I'm not guilty of this. <laughs> and al algorithm 11 is game theory. And it all really brings you through this long, big, windy tunnel of how we have emotionally the ability to look at our own natures in order to improve ourselves. I try to review as many tech, self-help, and business books as I can. Those three all together are like Samuel for me. That is like what I want to be, who I see as a human. Like that is what I want to contribute. And I always really just appreciate the ones that somehow end up combining two at least of those three subjects. Quotes. Science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of knowledge. Some problems are better avoided than solved. Sorting something that you will never search is a complete waste. Searching something you never sorted is merely inefficient. Size alone is enough to impair speed. Every guru has a different system and it's hard to know who to listen to. Do the difficult things while they are easy and do the great things while they are small. Email is a wonderful thing for people whose role in life is to be on top of things. Not for me. My rule in life is to be on the bottom of things. All human knowledge is uncertain, indirect, and partial. Small data is big data in disguise. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Engineers should look at time as a first-class citizen. Direction 1. I recommend this book for anyone interested in computer science who doesn't really have that many friends. <laughs> and they aren't very happy with their lives or anything like that. But they are interested in computer science. Or really anyone who who's curious about how we emotionally are similar to technology in terms of maybe like how our emotions operate. Direction two, if you like this book, I recommend checking out maybe Freakonomics. I don't know with specifically computer science what books other than this one I can name off the top of my head. Not to get futuristic, but probably The Inevitable as well by Kevin Kelly. But there were some things I heard in this book that reminded me a little bit of other ones in that book. It's not as technical, uh, but this one's a little bit more on the scientific side of things, at least for me, so I don't know. Algorithms to Live By by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video if you want to check those out as well. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. By the way, today I made my first Amazon affiliate sale. I literally just, I woke up and I had a dollar and 50 cents. It might not sound like a lot, but like I think Warren Buffett said that if you cannot find a way to make money while you sleep, then you will work until you die. And I really appreciate it. I wanna stress that, especially now, cause it's Thanksgiving. I really appreciate all the time that you guys spend watching my videos. It means so much to me. I really hope that you guys are learning a lot. Now, if I don't say anything else at the end of my videos after that whole outro for the rest of the year, um, 
I don't know if it's too early to say this, but I love you guys and I hope you have an amazing new year. With that being said, you can find me everywhere and I will see you then.